if you study in a school in Lebanon, you will read about how Indian workers, Indian sculptors, Indian elephants, Indian yogis came and built a Phoenician temple 4,300 years ago in Lebanon. How many Indian children, forget about children, how many Indian grown-ups have heard about this? From first standard to twelfth standard, even read a line about this in their history book? No. no. We only read how we were conquered, raped, looted, beaten by other people. I think one thing we have to do is write a more… rewrite a more responsible history of what has happened in this land for a long time. Not in the last three thousand years, not in the fourteen hundred years. What people in this land have done for a long time has to be brought back. Yes. In other countries, people are studying this. If you go to… there are Lebanese people. If you… if you study in a school in Lebanon, you will read about how Indian workers, Indian sculptors, Indian elephants, Indian yogis came and built a Phoenician temple 4,300 years ago in Lebanon, which is called as Baalbek which is a phenomenal temple, 4,300 years ago. Some of the foundation stones are over 300 tons and there is no granite in Lebanon. They transported it all the way from Egypt across the canal and up the mountain and put it up there. Indian elephants, workers and sculptors work. The proof, there's enough proof, but one proof is visually hanging there is lotuses in the ceiling. Indian sculptor, has to put a lotus wherever he goes. Yes. Where would a Lebanese sculptor have seen a lotus? Obviously, there are no lotuses there. So, how many Indian children have… forget about children, how many Indian grown-ups have heard about this? Nobody. No. The Tamil kings went and built Angkor Thom and Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Angkor Thom is the largest religious building on this planet. The intricacy and the engineering, the sheer design and engineering of how these temples are built, if you go and see, you will feel proud of being a human being. Because if human beings can think something like this a thousand years ago and manifest it, it is too much. This was done by the Tamil kings. Most of the work done by probably the Tamil labor. <laughs> From first standard to twelfth standard, does any Tamil child even read a line about this in their history book? No. no. We only read how we were conquered, raped, looted, beaten by other people. Yes. Then if there is no pride, why would you want to recreate it? You need to understand this. A culture, or a nation is just an idea. When human beings attach, take this on as an identity, attach some pride to it, it burns through one's mind and into his heart, now he wants to protect it, rise it, keep it clean, keep it wonderful. If you do not build pride into it, then people will want to avoid it. <laughs> Everybody will want to avoid Now, whatever you think is most successful in the world, you will want to imitate that. Today, our idea of success has become purely economic. Yes. Not aesthetic, not… it is not intelligence that we value, it is not wisdom that we value, it is not beauty or aesthetics that we value, it is not spiritual attainments that we value. Who is the big man in Coimbatore, if I ask? People will only name the richest man in the town. Yes. They will not name the wisest man in town, the most beautiful man in town, most meditative man in town. No, the richest man in town is the biggest man. So who is the biggest whatever, whichever is the richest nation, whichever is the richest culture? Namaskaram. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we are diving into through provoking topic, rewriting Indian history in the education sector. Let's explore how fresh perspective can shape the way we understand our past and pave the way for more inclusive future. 
history is not just about memorizing dates and events it's about understanding the stories of the people who came before us and the events that shaped their lives in india unlike in many other countries history is taught in schools through textbooks and curriculum guidelines but what if i told you that the way we learn about history is not always complete or accurate the stories we tell about the past have a powerful impact on how we see the world today but for too long the history taught in schools has often left out the experiences and contributions of uh, certain groups of people this is why there is a growing movement to rewrite history to make sure that everyone's voice is heard and everyone's story is told one of the key reason for rewriting history is to include the stories of marginalized communities for centuries the history taught in schools has focused mainly on the achievements of powerful men while ignoring the contribution of women dalits adivasis and other marginalized group by rewriting history we can shine a light on these overlooked stories and give a more accurate picture of the past another reason to rewrite history is to challenge the biases and prejudices that have shaped the way history is told many history textbooks have been written from the perspective of the powerful often painting a one-sided picture of events but history is complex and there is always a multiple perspectives to consider by rewriting history we can uncover these hidden biases and present a more balanced view of the past history is messy it's uh, rarely black and white there are always shades of gray and events are often more complicated than they first appear by writing history we can acknowledge these complexities and give students a more nuanced understanding of the past instead of just memorizing facts uh, they can learn think critically and analyze different sources considering multiple viewpoints before forming their own opinions when we rewrite history we empower students to think for themselves instead of just being passive recipients of information they become active participants in their own learning by encouraging them to ask questions challenge assumptions and engage critically with the material we can help them develop the skill they need to be informed and engaged citizens of course rewriting history is not always easy there are bound to be challenges and controversies along the way people may have different opinions about what should be included or excluded from the curriculum and there may be disagreements about how certain events should be interpreted but that's okay it's all part of the process of uh, reevaluating our understanding of the past and moving towards a more inclusive and accurate portrayal of history despite the challenges rewriting history presents existing opportunities for change it allows us to create a more inclusive and diverse curriculum that reflects the richness and the complexities of indian society by listening to the voices of those who have been marginalized and overlooked we can create a curriculum that is truly representative of the people it seeks to educate so what do you think about rewriting history in the education sector it's a big topic with lots of possibilities by taking a fresh perspective on the past we can create a brighter future for generations to come one where everyone's story is heard and everyone's contribution is valued finally sadguru went to usa to take a rest watch this video to know the fact comment your valuable opinions below if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel for more content on education and social change thanks for watching pranam